Welcome to this video in which we will look at uh, applying AC steady state analysis to a circuit, actually the circuit here, and we will solve the circuit using nodal analysis. And our goal will be to find the voltages at each of the nodes in the circuit. So um, this is a pretty straightforward circuit, and I guess to start, we'll ju just start working through the steps to nodal analysis, or I'm sorry, the steps to AC steady state analysis. And when we get to the nodal analysis part, we'll go from there. So we have that omega is 377. And so our first step in solving this is to replace the time signals uh, for the two current sources with equivalent um, phasers. So the 5 amp source becomes 5 amps at an angle of 0 degrees. The 2 amp source becomes 2 amps at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so that's step one. That wasn't bad. The next step is to find the impedances of the capacitor and the inductor. So the impedance of the inductor, that's J omega L, so J times 377 times 7.96 millihenries. And this, if you go through the math and work it out, turns into J times 3 ohms. So um, that's actually kind of a nice uh, number. Turns out I chose the uh, value of the inductor, so it would be a nice number. You can thank me later. OK. And now we need to get the impedance of the capacitor. This is 1 over J times 377 times 663 microfarads. And if you work this out, you get minus J 4 ohms. Again, I chose that number to make it work out really nice. So we'll replace the capacitance with the minus J 4 ohms. OK, so that basically completes step two, which again was finding the impedances of the inductor and capacitor in this case. OK, so the next step, step three, is to actually solve the circuit. And in this case, the circuit is most easily solved um, by using nodal analysis. At least we'll make that claim. So to do nodal analysis, I first need to define a reference node, and it will be the bottom. And then I need to find, the, in this case, two other nodes and give them node voltages. Now these node voltages will be phasors, just like the current sources that we have. So our two node, vo node voltages are V1 and V2. And now we solve this exactly as we would with a nodal analysis problem that does not have complex impedances, that is one that just has resistors. The only difference is uh, some of these things are going to be complex. And, uh, but, but other than that, it's exactly the same. So we have two unknowns, V1 and V2. Uh, fortunately, this is a circuit where writing out the nodal analysis equations is easy. And so we have then V1 times 1 over J3 ohms. That's the impedance of the inductor, which is connected to node 1, plus 1 over minus J4 ohms, plus 1 over 1 ohm. This is the resistor connected to node 1, minus V2, 1 over J3 plus 1 over minus J4. 
Those are the two components, or the impedances of the two components that are between node 1 and node 2. And the current flowing into node 1 is 5 amps at an angle of 0 degrees. Okay, applying, uh, or, or looking at node 2, we have minus V1, 1 over J3 ohms, plus 1 over minus J4 ohms, plus V2, 1 over J3, plus 1, this should be J3 ohms, all of these should be ohms in here, plus 1 over minus J4 ohms, plus 1 over 2 ohms, is equal to 2 at an angle of 90 degrees. Okay, so we have here two equations and two unknowns. Uh, they're linear equations, so in principle we should be able to solve them without any trouble. Now, the only thing that might complicate matters here is that the coefficients in front of uh, or multiply, that we're multiplying by, several of these things are complex, which means that um, the solution that I'm going to have is also going to be complex, which means that in order to solve this, you need to have a numerical method that will, uh, or, or a tool that will actually solve complex systems of equations. Um, MATLAB will do it. Uh, Wolfram Alpha will do it. Your calculator may or may not do it. You can, if you want to be brave, do it by hand in the sense that you could solve one of the equations for, say, V1, plug that into the other equation, and then solve for V2, plug the value of V2 back into V1. You could do that. Um, trust me, it's going to be a lot of work. So my preferred approach is to use Wolfram Alpha. Before I do, though, there's one thing that we need to make clear, and that's how to handle these polar um, currents, or these currents that are represented in a polar form. 5 amps at an angle of 0 has a real part of 5 amps and an imaginary part of 0. That should be amps there. 2 amps at an angle of 90 degrees has a real part of 0 and an imaginary part of J2 amps. Okay, it turns out to be easier to put this into um, Wolfram Alpha, at least, than to try to do it in polar form. So uh, that's why we convert from polar to rectangular form for the currents. So with that, then, I can plug this all into Wolfram Alpha. So we have V1. And we're just plugging in uh, the equations that we developed. Whoops. We're typing badly while we do it. And this will be equal to 5 amps. OK. So that's the first equation. The second equation will be minus V1. 1 over I3 plus 1 over minus I4 plus V2, 1 over I3 plus 1 over minus I4 plus 1 over 2, and that's equal to I2. So if I put those equations in correctly, I hit return, and Wolfram Alpha crunches on them for a while, and tells me something weird. V2 faults. I've never seen something like that before. Oh, what I did, I missed a parenthesis. Let's try that again. Uh, I missed another parenthesis. 
there, let's try that. Okay, now we've got what we wanted. And you can see that it goes through and uh, computes a solution. It gives us V1 is uh, 5.216 plus uh, J.4706. Oh, wait, we'll do this numerically. Yeah, 5.216 plus uh, J.4706. V2 is minus 4.314 plus J3.059. Okay, so through the miracle of modern technology, we have almost painlessly computed the fact that V1 was 5.216 plus J.4706 and V2 was minus point four three one four plus J three point oh five nine. Okay, so that completes step. Uh, uh, let's see, that would have been step three, where we compute or, or actually solve the circuit um, using complex values. Now we need to uh, replace our phasers, in this case the voltage at node 1, V1, and the voltage at node 2, node two with our time domain um, expressions. Now to do this we need to convert V1 from a rectangular to a polar form. So I'll just um, type it in. I'm sure there's a faster way to make alpha do this. But I type it in and it gives me a uh, polar coordinate result of 5.237 at an angle of 5.16 degrees. Okay, so I can go back to our picture and write down that V1 of T is going to be 5.237 cosine 377t plus 5.16 degrees. Okay, so this is our time, our time function for V1. V2, we will go back to Wolfram Alpha take our result and convert it into polar form. And the polar form we get here is uh, 3.089 at an angle of 98.0 degrees. So now we go back to our picture we have then V2 is 3.089 cosine 377t plus 98.0 degrees. And there we have it. We've solved for time functions of V1 and V2. And that pretty much concludes this example. Hopefully you found it useful and entertaining.